Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going over language and expression language in a part two of the series. In this video, I'm gonna be going over runnables in a bit more detail, how they work, and how you can use them in your projects. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm gonna have pushed this notebook to a repo and I'll leave that in the description below for you to get if you are interested in following along. So all we're gonna to need to do first is pip install requirements.txt. So for those of you wondering, I'm installing Langchain, OpenAI, TikToken, uh, Chat Anthropic, and I believe, I believe python.env because I'm just loading in my environment variables. But yeah, first we just got some quick notes I wanted to go over. First one is that Every runnable exposes these three uh, methods and properties. So you have an input schema, an output schema, and the config schema. And like I mentioned in a previous video, each runnable object implements a set of synchronous, asynchronous, and batch functions, such as invoke, a invoke, stream, a stream, and batch and a batch. Now, there are two main primitives that I've come across when I was looking into runnables with Langchain Expression Language. And the first one is the runnable sequence, and the second is the runnable parallel. And so, when would you want to use a runnable sequence? Well, you would want to use it when you are trying to create a sequence of events, a chain of events to happen, and the output of the preceding sequence is going to be the input to the next one so that's how we use these with the pipe operator that i talked about in the last video and so runnable parallels are a bit different so the way they work is you can invoke runnables concurrently with the runnable parallel and you can provide the same input to each and finally last thing that i thought was just somewhat useful is the set debug function that you can import from langchain core globals import set debug set debug to true and then you can use it when you're working with Langchain and your run. So first let's talk about passing data through with runnables. So we have something called a runnable pass through and this essentially just lets you pass inputs unchanged or add any additional keys to the next part of the runnable sequence. As you can see, there are three keys that we are setting in this runnable parallel object. The first one is just runnable pass through. So this is just going to pass through the input that it gets. The second one with extra is a runnable pass through with an assign of mult equals lambda x, x is the num times three. So this is going to assign a new key called mult, and we are going to be multiplying the original input by three and then adding that to the dictionary along with the, the original input. And then the modified key is going to take our original input and then go and access the num key and add one to it. So when I run this, you're going to see that passed remains the same because we only used runnable pass through. However, extra is has the num one from the original input, but also has the new assigned key with the mutation that we added to the original input and then modified, just modified the original input. So now all we have left is the original inputs value plus one, which is two and have modified. The next thing I wanna show you how to do is to use custom functions when you are working with runnables. So here I am going to be showing you an example that I just got from the documentation. Pretty straightforward, we have a length function and then we have a multiple length function which wraps this internal multiple length function. And the reason you need to do this is because inputs to these functions all need to take one single argument. So if you have any more complex logic or you have more than one argument you just need to pass it in as a dictionary to those functions versus the functions that only need one argument so once i have that we have our prompt that we're getting what is a plus b we get our model we have the chain where we ch we chain it together and remember the output of the prompt is going to be the input to the model and then we have the next chain which is going to be using item getter to get the arguments from the input that we call down here with invoke. So we're getting foo, which is going to mean that a is bar. And so this is going to be bar, which is then passed into this runnable lambda, which passes that bar string into the length function. And that will be come a's value. The next one is the dic is a dictionary. So b has these two arguments, has text one and text two. So this dictionary is going to have text one be 
var and then text two is going to be ga and then that whole thing is going to be passed into this runnable lambda which has the multiple length function and returns length of text one times length of text two so so three times three which is nine so b would eventually be nine so then we have a being three and b being nine and then that whole thing is going to be passed through using the pipe operator again the output of this entire thing is going to go into the prompt which is going to go into the model which is how we get 3 plus 9 equals 12. Next thing I wanted to show you is how we can use runnable configs with runnables. So we have this function here again I found this example from the documentation but let's say you want to have a function that runs with every call to your OpenAI model or whichever other model that you're trying to use. And we have this little helper function called parse and fix where it's taking the text and then the config is the runnable config. And this fixing chain is essentially, we're using LCL, LCEL to have it correct the text and then return. So we have this helper function and then in this callback with OpenAI, we have runnable lambda with the function here. And then we invoke foo bar and then we have all this other stuff that we're calling so when we run this the parser fix is used and then we return foo bar as it should be returned and then we show the tokens and the prompt used and one successful request next thing i want to do is talk about dynamic routing based on inputs so there are two ways to do this we can use custom factory to take inputs of a previous step and return and returns a runnable or we just use the runnable branch so let's use runnable branch first and talk about how this works so we are going to create our first chain here and this chain is going to be used to classify what types of questions we are talking about so i say given the user question below classify it as being either bodybuilding or union psychology or other here's the question <clears throat> So when I, when I run this, let, I have already done this, but let's just run it again. How do I bench press properly? We're going to get bodybuilding. We say, how do I act, do active imagination? Jungian psychology. Great. So now that we have this classifier chain, we're going to then build two different chains based on whichever input we're getting. We're, these two chains would be one of the options that we use to respond with so the first one is saying you are an expert in bodybuilding always answer questions starting with as dr mike is from renaissance periodization told me shout out him he's got some good stuff uh, you should definitely check it out uh respond to the following question question with the question variable and then this output will be passed into the model chat open ai and then the same kind of setup for the union chain we're just saying as dr cg young would say and respond to the question so now that we've created our classifier chain and we have these two sub chains or these two optional chains that we can use based on the input let's create a generic chain almost like the fallback in case we determine that this question being asked is just an other category <clears throat> and now what we do is we import runnable branch and we're going to create this branch by instantiating a runnable branch and then we're going to have lambda x bodybuilding in topic dot lower and so you'll remember that topic is going to be is going to be down here and if that is what happens then we're going to be returning the bodybuilding chain and then if we're using union psychology it'll be the union chain and if we determine that the question being asked is not about either of those two topics we're just going to use the general chain then we create a full chain with lang chain expression language using the pipe operator so we have a dictionary that has two arguments we have the topic which is going to be a chain and then we have the question, which is going to be the question that is being passed through. And then all of that is going to be passed to the branch. So when I run this, I say, how do I interpret my dreams? And here we go. We see AI message the content as Dr. C.G. Jung would say. To interpret dreams, it is important to approach with, with an open, curious mindset. Dreams, according to Jung, are a window into the unconscious and can provide valuable, ins valuable insights into your psyche, etc., etc. And then when we ask it, what is two plus two? It just says the answer is four and you used the generic chain to do that. And so let's talk a bit about how this is working. We have this full chain and the question is going to be, how do I interpret my dreams? So when this is invoked, this argument is passed into the classifier chain up here and that's going to output bodybuilding or union psychology or other. And when we get that, 
We then pass the output of this to the runnable branch. And when we pass that to the runnable branch, this is going to be passing either the bodybuilding category, the union psychology category or other. And then we're just saying dot to lower for the topic. So if it matches this or that string, we are going to be using these, either of these two chains respectively. And then if it's other, we're using the general chain. So just wanted to double double click on that just to make sure that we understand what's going on there. Next, I am using a custom function to route to different chains. So let's talk about it. Here we have this function definition route, if bodybuilding and info topic dot lower, return bodybuilding chain or Jungian chain or general chain. So somewhat similar to this above here, just in a function. Now we get the runnable lambda and we simply just pass that custom function to the runnable lambda instead of using instead of using uh, this this format right here. And so let's see, how do I grow my traps? Let's ask. As Dr. Mike Ezratel from Renaissance Periodization told me, you, to grow your traps, you can focus on incorporating specific exercises that target this muscle group. Some effective exercises include barbell shrugs, dumbbell shrugs, upright rows, trap bar deadlift, etc., etc. And then when I asked, what does alchemy have to do with dreams? As Dr. C.G. Jung would say, alchemy and dreams are interconnected in the realm of the unconscious. Alchemy traditionally uh, seen as the precursor to modern chemistry also held symbolic significance in psychological terms, etc., etc. Yep. Great, we are almost done. Just a couple more points that I wanted to go through here as we explore runnables. So, so we can also use runnable.bind to bind arguments at runtime. So let's say that there's a argument that you want access to, but it's not the direct output of the preceding runnable object, then you can actually bind these arguments at runtime so we have access to them throughout the entire chain. So the way this works is that we will first import everything we need so we have chat open ai prompt template string output parser and the runnable pass through and then we're going to instantiate this chat prompt template so we have write a four write out four flashcard questions with their options based on the topic given below use the format questions options solutions and then we have the human with the topic and then we create the model and then we create a runnable by chaining together the topic so the runnable pass through and then that'll pass the prompt. The output of the prompt will be past the model and then the output parser. So print the Cuban Missile Crisis. I already did this, but we will just show you again. So let's write four flashcard questions about their options, with their options. And so it's going to write out in that format that we requested. So we have the question, the options, and the solution. So now we can do uh, things like this in this example below. Let's say I just, for whatever reason, I only wanted the first flashcard question model.bind stop equals solution so this will tell us when we want to stop the model so that'll be the stop sequence so it only outputs the first question with its options and not the solution and now we can also attach open ai functions so i have this function here that we can use to extract the flashcard questions into more of a structured format so what I'm going to do here is, is I have this function schema called return questions and it takes two things. It takes the raw text of the flashcard questions and it has an array of the questions, which will be just an array of, of string questions. So what I do here, the setup is the same. However, now when I talk about it, let's see, when I use World War II as the topic that we want to talk about, the only difference here is that when we instantiate the model, we are binding the function call to be return question and then we pass in the function schema so when i do this now it should output json or it should put out the structured data for flashcard questions so there you go as you can see we have the function call with the arguments with questions what even sparked the beginning of world war ii who are the axis powers of world war ii so Obviously, you know, they have the JSON output mode now with the new models with OpenAI, so maybe it's not as useful as it used to be, or this example is not as helpful as one that you may want, but if you were to use the OpenAI function calling to extract information from raw data into a more structured format, you could do it this way if you wanted to. And now the final thing I want to talk about is fallbacks. So we've all had this problem, you know, like you're working with OpenAI and they have some 
API downtime and you know you have some you have something released on product hunt and your customers are angry oh my god like it's not working well fear no more because we can now switch between models and if you do this and you have fallbacks baked into your system probably a better user experience because that to them it seems like there's less downtime first thing i'm going to do here is i'm going to import chat open ai and chat anthropic chat model wrappers load our environment i'm also just going to set our anthropic api key because i need it for this and now i'm going to walk you through the example that they use in the documentation where they show you how to use this with the unit test package i'm creating a request and then i'm getting a response and then an error so we're just kind of simulating what this would look like uh, the OpenAI LLM max retries is zero for chat OpenAI, and then we're going to use Anthropic as the fallback. So LLM equals OpenAI LLM dot with fallbacks, Anthropic LLM. Now, as you can see, we hit an error when we use the OpenAI LLM without the fallback. And then when we use it with the fallback, we say, why did the chicken cross the road? I don't have enough context to determine the chicken's true motivation. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's obviously, you know, not the best answer, but we did not hit an error. We did not return an error response. We actually just switched to the fallback model. And so as you can see right here, we are creating a prompt, then we create a chain with the prompt, and then the LLM that we have up above with the fallback. And as I asked the question, I don't know why the kangaroo crosses the road. So that is nice to see. And then one final example here where we're doing it within a sequence. We create the chat prompt and then we create the chat model with the fake model name. So this is a bad chain here. And then we create the good chain. And now same thing, bad chain dot with fallbacks, good chain. So invoke animal is a turtle and as you can see, this will work because we added the fallback with the good chain and it gave us a compliment as it should. So cool, that is all I had for today's video. Again, I'm gonna leave a link to the GitHub repo in the description along with the Discord if you wanna join and hit me up and just talk about all this cool stuff. Um, drop a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you liked this and let me know if you have any questions. If you wanna see a third video about this, and yeah, if not, uh, no outro, so uh, much love and peace, y'all.